So the last two statements, 12, 13, they cover this topic on obscurations, what, what are the things that prevent us from uh, seeing, you know, the natural state, seeing Buddha nature. Uh, then the next few statements uh, pertains to questions of, um, with regards to the traditional uh, stages of attainments, meaning like the stages of attainments that are uh, outlined uh, in the Buddha's teachings. You know? So there, uh, there are stages such as, for example, uh, if one were following uh, what's known as the Shravaka or the hearer or the listeners uh, uh, stages of development, so how what defines a, a, a hearer or a Shravaka uh, is uh, one who understands, you know, like what are the causes of suffering, what are the causes of happiness, mm? and seeing basic workings of karmic causality, seeing um, the unsatisfactory nature of confused existence and its consequences, which is dukkha, suffering, understanding all of that, then making this strong resolve um, to become free from this kind of existence, this kind of confusion. So this is... Uh, this is the kind of individual then, you know, very diligently, very seriously following, finding ways to remove the mental defilements. Mm. So focus on uh, their own situation and how to get themselves out of this mess, so to say. So if one strictly uh, limited, uh, in this sense limited, one's focus, uh, your focus and your motivation to your own uh, condition and your desire to end your own condition and then proceeds uh, to cultivate uh, the mind, uh, to cultivate the mind, then there are these four stages, uh, generally speaking, of uh, development starting with what's known as the stream enterant. You enter into the stream, the stream that now, this down, now the symbolism of the stream is the stream towards awakening. Now, often the symbolism of stream is the stream that flows on in confusion. In this case, when they say stream enterant, as someone who has entered the stream, and in that sense, uh, whose movement towards freedom from suffering is, uh, you could say, somewhat inevitable. Like It might take very long, but they're not going to uh, turn back into a state of confusion. They, they are on their way. So the first level is called stream enterant. Second level is called one's returner. One's returner means that uh, uh, after this life, they'll be born in a different realm of existence. It may be human. If not human, then it says, you know, it won't be lower than human. It will be like in the God realms. Then they come back once to the human realm. So that's why they're called uh, one's returner. And then in the human realm, they complete their development and then achieve what is known as Hira Buddha, here is awakening, uh, uh, Shravaka Bodhi. And in that way, become a Shravaka Buddha, which is the fourth. Then the third is called uh, non-returner. And they're called non-returner because they have progress so much in this life, then they are reborn in a very uh, high um, God realm. Then from there, they complete their removal of the mental defilements. Then they proceed to the fourth stage, 
which here is called uh, Arhat, the Arhat stage. And the Arhat stage here, they have completely removed the mental defilements, we say, generally speaking. And then they become, they achieve the Shravaka's awakening, Shravaka Bodhi. So that's like one, 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 uh, uh, that's the path of the Shravakas, the hearers or the listeners. Then, <coughs> if you were uh, taking a different route, so to say, the Bodhisattva route, then the stages of development uh, is understood differently. The stages of training and what it entails is also different. There, sometimes they talk of it in terms of what's known as the five paths. And in other places, they talk about it in terms of the ten bodhisattva bhumi. In some ways, the five paths is more comprehensive because uh, the ten bodhisattva bhumi doesn't uh, talk anything about what you have to do to get to the first bodhisattva bhumi. Bhumi means level. And, uh, but the, the explaining in terms of the five paths uh, does talk about what comes before arriving at the first bodhisattva Bhumi or level. And so the five paths, uh, it's called uh, the path of preparation, uh, the path of accumulation, and the path of seeing. It is at the path of seeing uh, that one uh, arrives at the first Bodhisattva Bhumi. Uh, you see how right, the five paths uh, do uh, talk about, you know, do highlight you know, things that come before you're arriving at the first Bodhisattva Bhumi. And then after the path of seeing is the path of meditation. Then the path of meditation leads to the path of no more learning. Nothing more to learn. That's, that means fruit is achieved. So this is the five paths. Then the ten bodhisattva bhumis. Mm. The stages of the bodhisattvas, ten stages altogether. Then the eleventh stage is the stage of Buddha. So there are various uh, presentations uh, found in the Buddha's teachings that chart out the progressive, um, the progressive um, steps or stages uh, that one attains, uh, depending on which route, uh, which path one took. Uh, interestingly, there's another category, right? known as the uh, solitary realizer awakening, yeah, Pratyeka Buddha, uh, Pratyeka Buddha path. That path is not so well uh, described. <laughs> what is first stage? What is second stage? What is third stage? Generally, they just say something like, uh, they are the ones who work on understanding the 12 links of dependent origination. And then also you, you, will, you will see references to, uh, as for those who follow the hearer uh, awakening path, uh, the Shravaka Bodhi path, and that leads to the attainment of uh, this state called Arhat, uh, they are mostly focused on uh, the Four Noble Truths, uh, that they are primarily focused on uh, removing mental defilements with reference to the Four Noble Truths. Then the ones who follow the solitary realizer path, uh, the ones who will eventually become Pratyeka Buddha, attaining Pratyeka Bodhi, uh, they are primarily training uh, uh, in relation to what's known as the 12 links of dependent origination. 
Then those who follow the Bodhisattva path, you know, they are then primarily training in uh, Bodhicitta. So, so there are various of these um, stages of path being laid out, being taught, taught by the Buddha. Uh, then historically, there has there were a lot of debates, um, disagreements, uh, differences of opinion. What is the best to achieve? What is the most realistic to achieve? What makes most sense? You know, what's possible? What's not possible? All, all sorts of debates like this. So the next few uh, budget statements are addressing uh, issues related to these questions, uh, these these different ideas. You know. Uh, what is the level of attainment of one who follows the hearer path? Uh, what uh, and, and the various stages of the hearer realization, hearer awakening path, uh, and and what what are the various stages of attainments compared in this system to this system, this route to this route? You know, there are lots of different ideas and debates. So the next few statements are are addressing this particular cluster of issues. Uh, of course, here it will be addressed from the perspective of those who follow the Bodhisattva path. Right? So right right away, you know, you, you should not expect here to say, uh, to give it from the perspective of the hearer path. Those who are on the hearer path might look at these statements here and say, oh, I, I don't agree. <laughs> so already yeah, that they are here in, in, in the chapter under the Bodhisattva training, that means uh, we already know, right? For Kyoba Rinpoche, the Bodhisattva path is that supreme path. But even though the Bodhisattva path is the supreme path, uh, the path that will lead to the attainment of complete and perfect Buddhahood, uh, Samya Sang Bodhi, complete and perfect Buddhahood, uh, even though that's what obviously you know he emphasizes, he uh, says you know that we all should go in that direction. But nonetheless, you know, uh, he he we know that he he has some important or unique statements to make about the other paths. In other words, how do we, who already are committed to the Bodhisattva path, should think about these other stages of development? What is most skillful? You could say that. So let's let's look at you know, these these statements. So statement fourteen says the hearers, or here translated as the listeners, the hearers, the shravakas, also see a limited portion of the actual reality. Uh, so this statement is made was made by Gyoba Rinpoche in response to there were people you know during his time and even now there are some people so mainly these would be people or exclusively you would even say these would be people who uh, are so you know into the bodhisattva path so to say you know they're so excited about the bodhisattva path and they're so maybe even like uh, proud you know wow bodhisattva path is so profound is so great is so wonderful so this so that you know so much so that they say you know those who follow the hero path you know no, no way you know they, they don't they don't know anything at all their view is just mistaken <laughs> very there are people who believe who, who who say that. Now, to be fair to them, you know, they they didn't just come up with this themselves. Uh, they read certain sutras, and in certain sutras, the Buddha uh, seemed to use some very strong words to warn uh, bodhisattvas from falling uh, back into uh, 
this limited uh, way. That is the Bodhisattva's path's uh, problem or criticism uh, of what's known as the Hinayana, which is the Hinayana is only focused on one's own condition. Now here, an important footnote. When we say Hinayana, we are not at all talking about any existing Buddhist traditions. And I think it's a mistake yeah, just to think, oh, this refers to Buddhism in this country or this country or this country. And, and most, most commonly, this mistake is made in reference to the tradition of the elders, which is what Theravada means. The tradition of the elders, that tradition that is practiced in Southeast Asia, a lot of times, you know, people practice Tibetan Buddhism or Chinese Buddhism, or Korean, you know, they will say, oh, those are Hinayana. <laughs> or if they are generous and, or, or they know that that, that that name is sensitive, you know, they, they will say, oh, they, they are Theravada. But then, you know, in, in the back of their mind, they're really thinking, but, but they, they, are, they are the small people. <laughs> Because hina means small, you know, limited. Even means like uh, lowly. And it has all those connotations, you know. So sometimes in certain sutras, the Buddha, uh, in warning bodhisattvas, you know, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. If you give up uh, and then you only, you know, fall back to only thinking about yourself, that will be such a terrible thing, that will be such a horrible thing. So some people... When they read that, you know, they think, oh, that means, you know, if you follow that Hinayana, it's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. But then, no, this is just, just reading one or two texts and not seeing the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to the footnote, you know. So Theravada is its own system, you know. In fact, even in the Theravada tradition, there is also Bodhisattva path. They teach that. Now, it's true they don't emphasize, you know, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists there. So anyway, don't don't think, you know, when I say Hinayana, especially in our context, right? In our context, Hinayana, basically there are two types of Hinayana in our context. One is the you could say good hinayana <laughs> the good hinayana is referring to the importance of seeing yourself how uh, happiness and suffering takes place uh, how confusion and clarity takes place uh, and knowing for yourself that this is true and this is how it works and therefore I'm making this clear determination, I need to free myself from confusion, I need to free myself from suffering, I need to remove my mental defilements, all of that. That is like good Hinayana. <laughs> because we all have to start there. If we don't start there, uh, and we want to start immediately, Oh, I want to liberate all beings from confusion. I want to free all beings from suffering. You know, I'm going to be a great Buddha. Oh, with so many beings that I'm going to benefit. That's all just empty talk. Because you yourself don't even know where suffering comes from, where happiness comes from, how to, you know, put down the causes of suffering, how to uh, grow the causes of happiness. You don't even know that, how to do it for yourself. How in the world are you going to do it for other people? Right? So the good kind of Hinayana is the Hinayana that necessarily we all have to not just start from, in fact, have to make the basis of whatever else we develop. Then, what is the bad kind of Hinayana? <laughs> bad, so to say, you know, in quotes. The bad kind of Hinayana is the one that says, the one that refuses to develop beyond that. No, 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 sorry, just me. No, no, cannot, no time. <laughs> Not possible. I cannot solve your problem. Hmm? 
So please take care of yourself. Okay, have a good life. Bye bye. I'm going to meditate now. That will be like the wrong kind of yin and yana. So then, what were we really talking about here is motivation you know, or capacity of the heart. How big is your capacity and how limited is your capacity? Yeah, how big or how limited is your capacity? Not only limited, you know, limited capacity and not willing to entertain the possibility even of that capacity becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Then that will be stuck in the wrong kind of Hinayana. As for the right kind of Hinayana, then necessarily, if we're going to practice anything beyond that, in the Mahayana, in the Vajrayana, if you did not have Hinayana as your basic foundation, Basic here doesn't mean unimportant, you know. Basic here means very important. If you build a house and you have bad foundation, you build one floor, that house is a little shaky. You add another floor, definitely the house is now very dangerous to live in. Even a small earthquake, you know, everything comes tumbling down. Now, if one's capacity remains very limited, uh, only self, not necessarily selfish, you know. Selfish is like, you know, I will do anything to get my, right, to get what I want, even if it means harming you. Of course, even in quote unquote bad Hinayana, that cannot be there. Yeah, that is just pure selfishness. No, you would not be in the even in the limited, the bad <laughs> Hinayana if you are still under the power of selfishness. So that we need to understand, you know. Again, even though in some sutras the Buddha criticizes, you know. Those who say, I only want to follow this, my own, uh, kind of like solving my own problem. Then Buddha even say, you know, oh, that's very selfish. Hmm? But not literally very selfish, as in, you know, because selfish here, I define selfish as, as you know, in order to get what I want, uh, I might even do things that are negative to others. No. Hmm? Followers of even the limited Hinayana, uh, who go through the four, right, the four stages I talked about, stream entering, one's returner, non-returner, arhat. If selfishness is still present there, no way, you know, that they can achieve any of the stages. So it's not, you know, selfishness cannot be there, but limited motivation, yes, we say, yes, that is the situation of those who take the route of the hearers. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. What, what I'm trying to clarify here first, you know. We're not looked at the statements yet. <laughs> So then that statement, right, it says, you know, right? so here Kyopa says, uh, so Kyopa is actually addressing this, you know, and those who, 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 who over-criticize uh, the Hinayana and lumping all Hinayana together and then not understanding what Hinayana means, you know, there are those you know, in Kyopa's time and then even in our time, you know, so proud of Mahayana, Mahayana, we are the great way, we are the great way. And then even criticizing those on the uh, four stages, right? That oh, they they they're mistaken completely. You know, nothing there. Uh, so here, Kyoba says, "Ah, oh, no." The hearers, uh, 
they do they do have wisdom although their wisdom is partial meaning only one part not the whole picture but nonetheless you know they have they have seen something very profound they have realized something very profound so 414 based on practicing the tathagata's teachings the hearers also realize the partless particles of outer objects and the partless uh, moments of inner consciousness that is the lack of personal self and the self-realized buddhas realize a realize one and a half of the two types of the lack of self so here kempo kumbo is basically matching this uh, Hearers realize, for, for him, he's saying, hearers, hearers realize the lack of self in persons. Solitary realizes realize the lack of self of persons and partially the lack of self of phenomena. These are the two types, right? Persons and phenomena. If you're familiar with this kind of material, you, you should know what this is referring to. If you're not familiar, maybe you look up and read later. Yeah? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll get even more far away from what is going on here. In other words, those uh, two types of bodhi, uh, the hearer bodhi and the solitary realizer bodhi, uh, they are partial. And only Buddhas realize completely uh, the lack of self of persons and the lack of self of Phenomena. So in this, in in Kempo Kumpel's, you know, he 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 lays it out. He says, "Hearers realize fully the lack of self of persons. Solitary realizes when they realize their goal, when they reach the final end, what they have achieved is they completely see, realize, achieve the enlightenment whereby the lack of self of persons yes check <laughs> the lack of self of phenomena they get part of it not but not completely not profound only buddhas fully realize the lack of self of persons and the lack of self of phenomena meaning coarse and subtle levels of lack of self you can think of it that way. So, Shravakas realize fully, profoundly, the gross lack of self. Solitary realizes the gross, the, the obvious level of the lack of self, and partly the subtle. Buddhas completely the gross and the subtle. So continuing here, since they have such wisdom, they see a limited portion of actual reality. The absolute space of phenomena, emptiness, however, they do not see. <clears throat> it is said, <clears throat> like a sun ray through the clouds, at this point, you listeners and self-realized Buddhas have a limited wisdom. Even the noble Bodhisattva who have pure eyes of wisdom do not see everything. Meaning like the, even the 10th level Bodhisattva still uh, don't see everything. Exalted ones, the boundless wisdom of your Dharmakaya sees everything. The limitless knowable objects throughout space. So this is talking about uh, Buddha, the exalted one. Only Buddha see completely clearly. And it is said, the listener's absolute space of phenomena, meaning the absolute space of phenomena realized by listeners or hearers, <clears throat> and my and the Buddha's realization of the absolute space of phenomena are one 
in being alike. And the listener's complete liberation and my complete liberation are also the same. So then you, you might say, then what's the difference? The difference is the degree. And so in other words, qualitative, qualitatively speaking, there is no difference between the realization of solitary realizers or hearers and complete and perfect Buddhas in terms of the quality of that realization. The quantity, so to say, the extent, then completely different. <clears throat> Buddha's complete and thorough. So this, this statement here, on the one hand, shows us that <clears throat> the hearer's path, you know, is not so much mistaken as it is limited. So why did the Buddha teach it? Because, you know, for beings who are not yet, don't yet have all that capacity right, to be on the Bodhisattva path that leads to complete and perfect Buddha, then this other path huh, is what's appropriate for them, good for them. So the implication here is also, uh, first of all, we have to understand the Buddha doesn't teach anything that is not good for people. So we would go too far in saying, oh, <clears throat> these definitely, you know, gone too, too far. <laughs> if we say, oh, what? What the hearers realize, you know, is mistaken. Oh, how can it be mistaken? It's not mistaken. If it was mistaken, then the Buddha would have made a mistake to teach such things. But no, it's not mistaken. It is what's appropriate and what works for those at that level. So the broader implication, I think, for me, yeah, for this statement, you know, even if, you know, you're like, oh, they are discussing things that, you know, how I have no relevance to me, you know, I'm not even close to being a hearer's stream enterant, you know, what are all these levels, levels, levels going on, you know, if we're honest about it, you know, then some, you know, don't even think about that, you know, they get really into this and say, yeah, this level is this level, this level is this level, this level is this level, then they really like to debate, you know, as if like, you know, we are at, the de at, 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 at a point where we have to choose, you know, what level do I want to go, you know, and so that's also, you know, no, no, no real taking this to the heart, you know, it's just kind of like, getting caught up in a debate, you know, and feeling good that I'm on the more profound side, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm on the Bodhisattva one, yay! Um, kind of in that sense, you know, like, pointless, yeah, that kind of debate. So then, what kind of implications here? For me, <clears throat> it has implications such as, you know, when when we relate to others, you know, especially others with an interest in, in spiritual matters, so they might come to your Buddhist center or they might be curious and ask you about Buddhist practice, you know. There's a lot of things, you know, we can say to them or share with them. But we really need to have a sensitivity towards of course, we never absolutely know, you know, if we absolutely know the way to do it, then we are Buddhas already, right? <laughs> but even if we're not Buddhas, we, we can try our best, you know, to say, what, what would Buddha do, you know, <laughs> WWBD, what would Buddha do, right? What Buddha would do is not huh, to simply say to people, what is the most profound? Hmm? So often it will be what you are most excited about right, in terms of philosophy. Oh, then people come to you like, you know, emptiness, you know, the emptiness of emptiness, uh, then the, 
the you know unelaborated nature of mind. La 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 la. It just go on and on and on and on and on and on. You know. But people are like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> Not only that, maybe even they become kind of shocked. Or you are so excited, you know, oh, we Buddhists, we don't believe in God. And God is such a silly idea. Then people come to you, right? Buddhists believe in God? No, 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 this is all silly. Then the one who hears it, you know, oh. <laughs> Especially in the West, you know, a lot of times when people innocently ask you things like, do you believe in God, you know, then they're not really trying to debate with you theology. I mean, there are some, you know, maybe they really want to debate theology, you know, like Buddhists debate Hindus, Hindus debate Hindus, Hindus debate Jains, you know, I talked about that. But in your day-to-day -day life, you know, when when your friends or your relatives or your friends of relatives hear, oh, you are Buddhist, you know, they, they, they might, because they read somewhere, you know, Buddhists don't believe in God, then they might ask you, do Buddhists believe in God? You have to be skillful, you know. You have to think, you know, how can I really help this person? How can I plant a seed for this person? That is true. We don't lie. Lying is not a positive seed. It's not upaya. It cannot bring about something positive. So we don't lie, of course. But also we can have skill. Just like the Buddha skillfully taught those with a smaller capacity how to remove mental defilements. So you have the Shravaka path. You have the solitary realize the path and all the different different paths, you know. So in the West, you know, often, not always, you know, every situation is different, but this is the general principle. When people say, Do you believe in God? Do you Buddhists believe in God? Basically, what they are trying to understand, what they want to know, because they cannot understand. And 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 I don't blame them because their whole lives they think. The reason why we believe in God is not just because we think God exists. Of course, they do, probably. Or maybe not, actually. <laughs> but the reason they believe in God and they want everyone to believe in God is they believe that that is the only way that will stop you from doing bad things. So, so, so these, 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 the people who think like that, somehow I, I feel, you know, they have a very pessimistic view about human beings, you know, that if you did not have something like God you know, watching over you, then you will do bad things. <laughs> you will lie, steal, cheat, kill, because they, they really feel, you know, like if you don't have something like God that sets a standard, you know, then human beings are inherently, you know, negative, evil. <laughs> and you will lie, steal, cheat, and kill. So if you answer, you know, to them, oh yeah, no, Buddhists, we don't believe in God. Basically what you're saying to them, what they are hearing is, oh my God, this guy, given the right conditions or the bad conditions, he's going to lie, steal, and cheat, and kill. <laughs> He's going to kill me hmm? because he has no moral compass. That's essentially what they're asking. <laughs> so we have to be skillful hmm, in answering questions like that. <laughs> they say, do Buddhists believe in God? Yes. Yes, we do, you know. We have many gods. <laughs> No, no need to go into details, you know. Often that's all. They're like, oh, really? They say, yes, yes. Now, if they, they push a little bit, you know, and they say, what, what, what God? Well, another term for the four immeasurables are the four divine states. 
you know, the four immeasurables are also called the four divine states, the four divine abodes, the Brahma Viharas. And so what is that? Love, compassion, joy, equanimity. Of course we have gods. Our God is love. Our God is compassion. Our God is joy. Our God is equanimity. Yeah, of course we have God. Why not? <laughs> so if they push, so what, 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 what is your God? My God is love. My God is compassion. My God is joy. My God is equanimity. No bias. No bias, no BS. <laughs> how, how, how would they object to that? No, that's wrong. <laughs> they cannot, you know. In fact, in Tibetan Buddhism, you know, we, we call Buddha La, God, you know, but transcendent God as opposed to samsaric gods. So it says, the Buddha is the embodiment of the four immeasurables. That's our God, you know. So Buddha taught, the Buddha is the awakened ones, taught all these different ways. Based on the capacity of the hearers. Now, not just based on capacity of the hearers, it also has to be based on what is truly helpful, right? If, if it's just based on what people want, then that's called a salesman, you know, a bad salesman. Yeah. Whatever you want to hear, they'll tell you that. No, no, no. That's, that's not the only yeah, criterion. The other criterion is it has to be based on what is true. So the Buddha, on the basis of, of fully knowing what is true, and on the basis of having developed fully the skill to teach others, brought these two together. He taught the Arhat path of the four stages of how when you begin to develop your mind, cultivate your mind, remove mental defilements, you enter into the level of stream enterant, once returner, non-returner, arhat. When you enter the path of Parteka Buddhas, yeah, you begin to train in the 12 links of dependent origination, and at each level, as you increase your understanding, you arrive at a different level. When you enter the path of Bodhisattvas, with the path of accumulation, uh, the path of joining uh, or preparation. Uh, joining actually is the second path. First one is path of accumulations, path of joining, uh, meaning connecting. Connect to what? Connect to the third path, the path of seeing, the path of meditation, the path of no, no more learning. Mm -hmm. All those. All these uh, the Buddha taught accordingly, first of foremost, based on him having seen. Right? Reality, the truth. Then how that truth is then being communicated in a way that is most helpful right, to the other. That is ultimately uh, the essence of caring for others. It's a delicate balance between these two. So today, we'll stop here. <laughs>